Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Williamsburg. Let me move my mic a little closer to me. Sorry, everyone. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Williamsburg Community Chapel. We are so glad you are here in worship. Um, uh, my name is Luke Kincaid. I am the operations pastor here at the chapel and have the honor of worshiping alongside you all online. So you can find me. Um, obviously, you can hear me. Um, but I am also in the chat boxes, whether you are on YouTube, on Facebook or on our websites. I am there and would love to interact with you. Say hello. Good morning, Eddie from Cali. Um, great to see you here, Eddie Lou. Welcome to the chapel here on this Sunday. So grateful you are here in worship with us and to all those who are hopping on. This is what we like to call our digital foyer, a space just before the service that's meant to be a little more casual, I guess you could say, or interactive, um, like you would, like it would be if you were in the actual foyer here at the chapel. And so um, I love just getting to hear, know who's here and just checking in and see how everyone is doing. So to kick things off, I just have a question that'll pop up on the screen here, just asking, how are you doing as you're entering into worship today? Here in Williamsburg, Eddie, I don't know, you can tell me about California. It has been uh, one of our summer hot weekends. It has, you know, the, the dog days of summer, I guess you could say, where it has been in like the mid 90s, but has felt like 103, I think my phone said the other day. So it has been hot. One of those uh, times where you just have to either be in water or inside of the air conditioning. And so um, yesterday we were at the pool, beating the heat at the pool. Our family has definitely gotten into the local pools. Both my girls, Mackenzie and Finley, love swimming. And that has been a great solution to the heat here this summer. And so um, uh, my next question too is, is how are you beating the heat this summer? Whether you're a pool person or otherwise, um, what has been the ways you've gotten around the heat this summer? Eddie, let us know how it's out in California. Probably hot, I imagine, but maybe a different kind of heat out there. Um, at, when you're, I don't know if it says humid, I'm not sure, I've never actually been to California. But for all those joining, let us know how you're beating the heat this summer, whether it's pools or the boating on the water or whatever it might be. And as we head into our service, we always have some special online only content just for you all who are worshiping online as we prepare for our service and head into it in just a few minutes. And today, um, I have a little video from Hunter Rue, our Associate Pastor of Discipleship, talking about our upcoming Starting Point class. Um, this is an opportunity for anyone, whether you're new to the chapel or been here for a while, to learn more about the mission, the ministries, and if you'd like to become a member at the chapel. And so this is coming up in just a few weeks and there's free lunch involved, which is great and really you just need to sign up, but I'll let Hunter Rue tell you more. And so check this video out from Hunter Rue about our upcoming starting point class. Well, over the past year, I've been so encouraged by all of the new people that I have met here at the Williamsburg Community Chapel, whether at our Chapel Family Picnics or even last year's Chapel Family VBS or on Sunday mornings in our worship services. I see many new faces, even still recently. And because of that, we know that we have many people who are looking to take their next steps and make deeper connection with Christ and His community here at our church. For this reason, we are excited to offer our Starting Point class coming up on August the 14th from 1230 to 2. We are excited because this class provides an opportunity for anybody, whether you're new or a seasoned person here at the chapel, to find out more about our mission, our ministries, and for those who are interested in taking this next step, membership here at the chapel. On August the 14th, we'll gather for lunch after church at no cost to you and your family. You're just encouraged to attend so that you can find out more about our family of faith and how you can grow as a disciple of Jesus Christ at our church. For more information about our Starting Point class, please visit wcchapel.org slash starting point. You can also register for the class at that site. And you can always email me with any questions you have at hruch at wcchapel.org. Again, please consider attending Starting Point on August the 14th. I would love to see you there. Thanks, Hunter, for putting that together. And please just go head on over to uh, the registration site to get signed up for that. We would love to have you join us. It's right after church. Um, and if you can't come in person, you can talk to Hunter as well. We do have an online version. Um, but if you're able to make it in person, we love getting to meet you and be able to serve you lunch at that class. So once again, that's August 14th for our next upcoming starting point class. It's going to be great. So. 
that is starting point. Um, the other big thing going on here at the chapel this week is VBS. That's right, Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. And uh, it's going to be... Well, it's just going to be an amazing week, we think. We're looking forward to all that God is going to do and all that God is going to show all of our youngest kids, but not just them, everyone who joins, because it's what we're calling Family VBS. This is, uh, excuse me, this is because we want parents to come with their kids, grandparents to come with the kids, neighbors, friends to come with their neighbors or friends' kids, and join together at VBS in worship, singing together, playing and having fun together, eating along one, alongside one another, um, and really taking this experience together so that the conversations are about what we learned today, not just what did you learn. And so we're looking forward to this Family VBS. This is only the second time we've ever done it in this format. It starts tomorrow. It's 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. each evening, Monday through Thursday this week. The first hour's outside with games and crafts and eating food, and then the second hours inside for our program in the main worship room and so it's going to be a really great week um, throughout it there's going to be special meals each night first night is hot dog or hot dogs and burgers and then pizza and then the last night thursday just a little uh hint i don't know if this is public at all yet but we are getting old city barbecue and the snow to go truck on thursday so i guess if you have to pick a night to come come that one but come all of them we would love to see you there for family vbs and even if you aren't coming, I just want to give you a couple ways to partner with us as this week um, is about to begin. The first is this. We are um, bringing in donations to support one of our local mission partners, Grove Christian Outreach, throughout the week of VBS. Every year at VBS, we have the um, kids partner with some local organization so that the week is not just about what they're learning, but also an opportunity for them to give to others in our community. And Grove Christian Outreach Center has been one of our longtime mission partners, and we love getting to support them. And they are looking to get school supplies as the fall is approaching and school is approaching. And so um, they are looking for us to help bring in school supplies. There is a list of supplies. I think if you go to wcchapel.org slash familyvbs, wcchapel.org slash familyvbs, and then you scroll down, you can click. There's a link there where it talks about all the supplies. But these are, it's like a list of like 50 things, every basic school supplies you could want. If you think of it, it's probably on the list. So um, even if you don't see the list and you want to support it, bring it by the chapel. Even if you're not coming to VBS, you can just drop it off. There's going to be, I think they're calling it a donation station in the main foyer. And so we would love to have your support in that. Um, you can bring it during the day or swing by during the VBS time if you'd like to see everything in action. Um, and we are looking forward to supporting our local mission partner, Grove Christian Outreach. So let's really join together for that and really show Grove how excited we are for all that they're doing as the fall heads in, or as we head to the fall um, with our donations. The second thing we can be doing is really being in prayer for this week. Um, it's not just about the fun that we're going to have. It's also about what God might do or is going to do in the hearts and lives of those coming. We know there's a lot of people that this is their first or only interaction with the chapel or with um, a faith community. And so we would love for this to be an opportunity for them to get plugged in in a deeper way to a church community here at the chapel. So please be in prayer for those who are coming, for those who are volunteering, for the staff who are running it. Um, we want this to be a special week, and we look forward to sharing all those stories with you um, next week at our Family VBS Sunday. So. Let's bring in donations, let's be in prayer, and then let's join together next Sunday for VBS Sunday. I actually get to preach at it, which I'm excited for, um, and it's gonna be a really neat Sunday of recapping and highlighting and hearing stories of all that God did throughout the week. So, VBS starts tomorrow. Be on the lookout for that. Also on social media, we'll be posting lots of stories throughout the week so that you can stay in tune with that. All right, our service is going to begin in just a moment. We have the orchestra today, which is exciting. So we've got some added instruments, which is always fun. That adds some extra sound to the uh, music being played. And as our organ prelude begins, it's going to start with the organ and then head into a, uh, an or orchestral, I guess, piece, um, which will be wonderful as well as our service begins. So thank you once again for joining us in worship. Again, my name is Luke Kincaid. I'll be with you throughout the service in worship. 
So you can find me in the chat boxes, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook or our website, please interact. I love getting to know who's here. I'm here to answer questions. I'm here to pray for you. If you have any prayer requests, you can type them in and I'll be putting in links throughout the service as well that can um, help you quickly get to some of our announcements and participate that way too. Well, our service is about to begin. Once again, we are in this summer sermon series called The Lord Tests, where we are looking at this concept of testing that we all can relate to in our lives. And I look forward to hearing more about that in our service in just a moment. But now let's switch over to that as our organ prelude begins to kick off our worship service. stand for our call to worship this morning. We're going to be in Psalm 18. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies.
a safe place, a secure place. Thank you that we are gifted the opportunity to draw near to you by the Holy Spirit. And thank you that you also draw near to us out of your steadfast love. Jesus, you made this possible through your death and resurrection on the cross. May all creatures praise your name. It is because of your righteous, omnipotent hand that we may stand and worship before you today. God, we love you and we ask that you increase our joy in our salvation and renew a steadfast spirit within us. May we proclaim your word and sing your praises of the great mercy that you have bestowed upon us. It is in your precious and holy name that I pray. Amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> There's a story of an Orthodox theologian who was a visiting lecturer in a seminary classroom discussing the historical development of the creeds. And one student raised his hand and asked, what can one do when, when one finds it impossible to affirm certain tenets of the creed? And the professor replied, well, you, you just say it. And the student, feeling a little misunderstood, tried to clarify the question, but, but got the same response. You just say it, especially when you have difficulty believing it. The student raised his voice, how can I with integrity affirm a creed which I do not believe? And the priest replied, it's not your creed, it's our creed, meaning the creed of the entire Christian church. And I read that story in a book called A More Profound Alleluia, and in it the author writes this, the crucial point is that the creed is not the sole possession of any individual. It belongs to the church Catholic, to the covenanted community called and chosen at God's initiative. I sense we live in a culture, including church culture, that can be very wary of anything um, insincere or seeming artificial. And so especially those things that are rehearsed, we can kind of question the authenticity of it, labeling it mechanical, rote, unthinking, just checking boxes, going through the motions. But I would contend that our faith must be rehearsed. Our faith, our participation in God's story must be rehearsed and that if it were always spontaneous, we would be denying the truth that faith is something received, not produced. More than once, Paul writes about sharing what he had received. In 1 Corinthians 11, he writes, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. And he goes on in that chapter to describe the Lord's Supper, that Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it and said, This is my body given for you. A few chapters later, in 1 Corinthians 15, he writes, For I delivered to you as of first importance that which I received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And perhaps most clearly, in Galatians, he writes, For I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from any man nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. So faith is not something that is, is mastered. It's something that is continually received, uh, repeated, reaffirmed. Creeds are not a way to make us proud, again, thinking we've checked the right boxes, or to say, well, I'm saved because I believe. It's supposed to let us humbly and yet boldly say, I'm saved because of God, in whom I believe. This is the God in whom I believe, the maker of heaven and earth, the Father Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So the content of our faith is proclaimed and the substance prayerfully is deepened as we say these words together. Would you stand and join me in proclaiming the good news that was delivered to us, that we received as Christ's church throughout all time and place. This is the Nicene Creed written in the fourth century. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's sing together, all creatures of our God and King. of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, oh praise Him, Alleluia, thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam.
Please be seated. I'm so grateful for a God who loves us and invites us to be still before Him, trusting that He is faithful and that He is good. Amen? And we're grateful that we can worship together here at the Williamsburg Community Chapel. I continue to see a lot of fresh and new faces, at least to me, and so our invitation constantly is that if you are new, or even if you've been here for many years but have not quite connected with us, is that you would take some time after the service and visit with us at our information desk right out those doors and fill out our digital connect card, which will allow us to get to know you better so that you can get to know us better, so that we can grow in Christ together. In just a few minutes, uh, we will hear from our choir for our offertory. And our offertory is our opportunity to express in worship through giving. It's also an expression of our trust in the God who provides. And just to give you a glimpse into how the Lord continues to use your generosity and your willingness to release the material resources He has given you, we have a wonderful pastoral team. And from time to time, other churches say, can we use some of the gifts of your pastoral team at our church? For example, Travis Simone, our lead pastor, is preaching at Eastside Church over across the way, a church plant from the chapel from a number of years ago. Travis is preaching there. I had the privilege of preaching at one of our sister churches, Virginia Beach Community Chapel, this past Sunday. And so we want to say that we are grateful for your generosity and how that allows us as a pastoral team to be supported so that we can support churches both in Williamsburg and beyond in Hampton Roads. As we look ahead to this week as a family of faith, we have some exciting announcements. The first is happening tomorrow night. Our family vacation Bible school is finally here. It will start tomorrow evening, Monday, and go through Thursday evening, 5.30 to 7.30. And at the first service, Rich let out a great laugh when I said that if you have not registered yet, there is still time to register for you and your family so that you can join us. And we are going to have a wonderful time examining and looking at the truth of the greatest treasure of all, that is Jesus Christ. I hope that if you uh, are not able to join us, that you will pray for our Vacation Bible School, that not only the children, but families will be able to walk more closely with Jesus Christ through their time and our time together. I'm looking forward to it myself. If you still need to register, visit wcchapel.org slash VBS and let us know if you have any questions. The next announcement is our starting point class, which will be happening on August the 14th in a few weeks. Uh, this is an opportunity for you, whether you're new or seasoned here at the chapel, to find out more about our mission, our ministries, and for those interested, pursuing membership here at our church. Uh, lunch is provided, no cost to you. I realize that is very attractive these days. But we do ask that you would visit wcchapel.org slash starting point for more information and to register so that we can be best prepared for you to attend our class. In just a moment, the choir will sing a song, We Will Remember, thinking back about God's faithfulness in all things. After that, the children will be dismissed out those doors for children's ministry. But as we prepare to hear from our choir, let us be encouraged to give either through the drop boxes at the, um, at the exits, either online at wcchapel.org slash giving, at the East One drop box, or by mailing your gift in through the United States Postal Service. However we express our giving, let us give back to the God who has given everything for us in and through his son, Jesus Christ.
pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, be with us as we hear your word and be with Rich as he delivers the words you have given him to enlighten your word to us. Not only would we hear your word, but try to live our lives as you test us by your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand if you are able for the reading of the word. Shout for joy to the God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name, Selah. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Selah. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. 
We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. <clears throat> I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows to you, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fattened animals with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Selah. Come and hear all you who fear the God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmist calls the tested to worship together. Did you hear the psalmist calling you to worship? Shout for joy to God, everybody. Sing of God's glory. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Come. Come and see the wondrous ways of God. Bless our God, all you people. Come. Come and hear about the goodness of God. As we read Psalm 66, we hear the psalmist calling the tested to worship together. This summer, we've been in a series called The Lord Tests. We've been looking at various tests through Scripture, seeing that God indeed tests us. And as we've looked at these various tests, we've created a, a tool bag of sorts, tools for the testing. And as we've seen these tests, we see that they reveal some realities and truths about ourselves, about what's in our hearts, about what truths we've been putting in our brains. We've revealed in these tests the truth about who we trust and ultimately the truth about who God is. These tools have included trust, remembering, obedience, repentance, hope, and waiting. But as we approach the Psalms this morning, as we approach our song book for life, our prayer book for life, I believe that the tool for testing that we find in Psalm 66 is the tool of worship. Maybe even more specifically, corporate worship. Worship together. That the psalmist calls the tested to worship together. Did you hear him calling? He's calling his people. He's calling the community. He's calling the whole world to come and worship. Because I believe the psalmist knows and has experienced for himself that during times of testing, worshiping together is critical. And so the psalmist calls the tested to worship together. I have a question, though. Have you ever found it difficult to come and worship with others? Have you ever found it hard to come to church? Now, some of these realities are, are the busyness of our life. Right, kids' soccer games in the mornings, a, a work schedule that we couldn't adjust, a trip to see the grandkids, we just couldn't say no. 
Sometimes it's merely the busyness of our lives that make it hard to come to worship, but I'm talking about a deeper reality. Maybe it's a feeling of guilt and shame. Maybe there's so much guilt and shame in our life through something we did or didn't do, something we said or didn't say, and it's left us on the outskirts, not wanting to come and worship with others. Every Sunday we have on the the schedule a, a floating pastor, a pastor that doesn't have a role in the service, that sort of walks around the building and, and see who he bumps into and what conversations he can have. Sometimes as I walk around the building, I find people sitting in the blue chairs by the library or in a corner of the cafeteria, or sometimes down on the other end of the building, sitting in the dark, looking at their phone. And when I strike up conversations, sometimes the answers I get are, well, I didn't want to go to worship today. I I didn't feel worthy to be in there. I didn't feel right because of some of the things I had done this week. And if that's you, the, the psalmist is calling out saying, come, worship together. Because the psalmist calls the tested to worship together. But there's other realities that keep us away from worship, that make us hard to come to church on a Sunday. Sometimes because of the realities in our lives, the broken relationships we're experiencing, the traumas or difficulties that we're going through, uh, different things that we face, it gets us frustrated with God. We're angry with God. God, you're not holding up your end of the bargain. God, I'm doing all these things and, and this still happens to me? Sometimes those feelings keep us out of church. They make it so we don't want to go to worship. But the psalmist is calling. And the psalmist calls the tested to worship together. Whether you're feeling weary or lost or abandoned or frustrated with God, the psalmist calls the tested to worship together. Yes, as I look through Psalm 66 this week and preparing for this sermon, I'm convinced that this psalm is indeed a call to worship. Didn't you hear the psalmist? Come on, come see, come hear, come worship, come shout together. I love a good call to worship. I love a service that begins with a call to worship. Have you noticed that we always begin with a call to worship? That every week after the organ plays or outside after the band plays, one of the members of the praise team steps forward and and calls us into worship. Because there's so many things that are distracting us. There's so many feelings and emotions and realities in our life. And so we're called in to worship. This week I texted Tommy, our creative arts director, or worship arts director, sorry Tommy, And and I said, Tommy, I need a good definition for a call to worship. I know Tommy's always got thoughts about the worship service. And Tommy texted back a, a whole bunch of realities about a call to worship. I only edited a few words Uh, to make it flow a little better. It was a couple texts that I had to group together. But this is what Tommy said. He said, a call to worship is an invitation from the world into the kingdom. It's It's an invitation from isolation into fellowship. From the false narratives and lies into the truth of God's word. It's an invitation from self-centeredness into self-giving as Christ is revealed and given for us. Another text appeared. Tommy wrote, in fact, it's both an invitation and a command. The call to worship is a command in that God is God. He is creator and king, worthy to be praised His enemies come cringing before him. 
The call to worship is an invitation in that God is Father and most fully and reliably known in his son, Jesus, who specifically and clearly says, follow me, come to me. The psalmist calls the tested to worship together. But one of the most refreshing parts to me about this psalm is that this psalmist understands what it means to be tested. This psalmist has experienced the hardship of testing. This psalmist has suffered and gone through the very things that the community is going through and still says, come worship. Listen to his words starting in verse 8. Bless our Lord, or bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living, and who has not let our feet slip? For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. The psalmist paints these pictures of what these tests feel like. He says it feels like a net. A net thrown over a hunted animal. In our test, we feel trapped and caught. We feel like we've lost control of what's going on around us. We've lost our freedom to live. The psalmist says the tests feel like a burden, like a role you never wanted, like a predicament that you're in that you never chose for yourself. The psalmist says that these tests feel like the enemy is riding on our heads. The psalmist has experienced the crushing reality of life and death. The psalmist says these tests feel like fire. Like a city being burned by its conquerors. Our security lost. Our life upended. These tests can feel like waters like flood waters that unexpectedly out of nowhere bring tragedy to our lives. The psalmist knows our struggle. The psalmist knows your struggle. And the psalmist says in the midst of it, come and worship together. You see, the psalmist calls the tested. The psalmist invites the tested. The psalmist goes as far as commanding the tested to worship together. And so one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is, is why? Why is worshiping together in the midst of the test so important? Why is the psalmist so eager and so uh, loudly saying to us that we must not stop worshiping together? Well, I I think there's a lot of answers to this question. And I don't have time to, to put all those answers out there. So I just have this one for this morning. I think that worshiping, the, worshiping together in the midst of our tests changes our perspective on the test that we're facing. That worshiping together changes our perspective on the test that we are going through. And so, as the psalmist continues, the psalmist, I think, will give us two ways in which worshiping together changes our perspective on the test that we are facing. And the first one is this. The psalmist says, when you worship, you worship God for who he 
is. That when you come together, you worship God for who he is. Let's read again the first few verses of chapter 66. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power and your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. See, when we we come together in worship and we declare that God is who he is, when we worship God for who he is, then we remember that God is still in control, that he is still God and that he is still good. We we remember that he is all-powerful and all-knowing. We're reminded when we worship our creator that he spoke into existence life with his words, that he hung the stars in the heavens with his hands. We regain a picture at the enormity and awesomeness of God. And when we do that, we gain a right perspective on the tests that we're facing When we worship God, we we press the truths of God deep down into our hearts. We instill them in our minds. And when we bring our hopes and our fears and our pain and our frustration, and when when we bring them before that God, then we realize that he is in control and he's got it. Uh, Last year, I had to join the world of Twitter I'm not much for social media. I've still never made a tweet. I'm not even sure what that means. But my oldest son started playing football at Lafayette High School. Go Rams. And uh, the only way that the athletic department communicates at Lafayette High School is through Twitter. And so if I wanted to know when practice was or what the game schedule was, I I had to download Twitter to my phone. And so I I downloaded Twitter, and when I did that, it started giving me all these different people to follow. And I thought, how does it know who I like and who I don't like? And I was so amazed at technology. And then I said, okay, I'll follow one other person. So I follow two people on Twitter. I follow the athletic director at Lafayette High School, go Rams, and I follow Tim Keller, Tim Keller's a pastor in New York City. And when I worked in New York City, I really gained an appreciation for Redeemer Church and all that they were doing in in New York. But this year, or last year, as the pandemic occurred, Tim Keller was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And as I read through different tweets that he put out, I was sort of amazed that he could preach a whole sermon with one tweet. Maybe Travis and I and Hunter and Claude and Dale, we should all think through this in the length of our sermons. But in one tweet, he he preached a small sermon and, and he wrote this. He wrote, I have stage four pancreatic cancer. But it is endlessly comforting to have a God who is both infinitely more wise and more loving than I am. He has plenty of good reasons for everything he does and allows that I cannot know. And therein is my hope and strength. When we keep worshiping together, the tests that we're going through are put in perspective when they're held up against an incredible, amazing, awesome God. But let me get real practical for one minute. Because I know that even this morning, some of us had a hard time coming to worship. I know that some of us were were wondering if we could get here and make it here. Even after the nine o'clock service outside, one woman came up to me and said, I threw up in my car this morning, so nervous to come to worship. And I just said to her, I'm so glad you're here. But I know that some of us are struggling to be here and others, it was a joy to get in the car and drive to church this morning. But as I consider that reality, 
I know that for those of you that are struggling to be here, one, I'm just so glad you're here. But what I want to say to the rest of you is we need to be singing and worshiping for them and with them. You see, the psalmist, in Psalm 66, he continues on. And and as the psalm continues, he goes from the, the plural language of we, and he starts using the singular language of I. And starting in verse 16, he says this. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly, God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. See, when we worship together, we have to acknowledge that there are people around us and and we're worshiping for them and we're worshiping with them. And that there are some people in this room this morning that are, are shaking their fists at God saying, I don't get you. I don't understand why this is happening to me. And the chorus around them is the rest of us with our voices singing, our God is good and great. The psalmist calls the tested to worship together. And so we worship who God is, but secondly, we worship what he has done. If we read in verse 5 and following, we see the psalmist say this. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. The psalmist says that as we worship together, we also consider all that God has done. And the psalmist looks back to what may be the greatest salvation moment for the people of Israel. He's referring to that moment in Exodus, right? The Israelites had been imprisoned in Egypt for 400 years. They were crying out to be rescued. They were crying out to be saved. And God raised up a deliverer, Moses. And with The Holy Spirit with them, Moses was able to to get Pharaoh to change his mind, to release his people. And as the Israelites marched out of Egypt, Pharaoh began to change his mind. And Pharaoh said, I want them back. And Pharaoh sent his army, the Egyptian army, the most powerful army the world had seen to date after the Israelites. And as we read this story in Exodus, we see that the Israelites are up against the sea. And closing in on them, they could hear the sound of the chariots. They could see the dust clouds in the distance was the Egyptian army, the army of death. There was nowhere for Israel to go. It was over for them. But God split the sea God opened up the jaws of death and the people of Israel walked through the sea on dry ground. And we all know this story because when they got to the other side, the Egyptian army entered that same path that God had created. But this time, God called the waters to fall down on the army of death. And the people of Israel were saved. Psalmist says, don't forget that God defeated death. And for us as Christians in the year 2022, we we don't just look back at that moment in Exodus, but we look to the ultimate Moses. We look to God himself, Jesus Christ, who came to rescue us, who came to part the waters of death so that we could have life in him. No, when we come to worship, we declare the gospel of Jesus Christ, that there is a holy, 
awesome God. But because of our sin, because of our desire to to live our lives our way, there is brokenness. Brokenness between us and God. Brokenness between us and each other. Brokenness between us and creation. And we have, because of that brokenness, now surrounded ourselves with death. But Jesus came. Jesus came and and he took our death. He took the penalty for our sin. He took that brokenness and our shame and our guilt. And he brought it to the cross. And after he died, he went to the grave But three days later, just like God parted that sea, the tomb was opened and Jesus was resurrected, raised to life. And he said, all of you who believe in me have this life too. And I don't know if you've noticed it, but every worship service we walk through this gospel When Tommy and Bill put together a worship service, every week that worship service declares the gospel, the greatness of God, our need for a savior. We confess our sins. We declare the goodness of Jesus Christ, died and resurrected. And then we respond in faith through our offering, through communion, through prayer, through song. And then we're sent out into this world to live out that gospel for the world around us. Every week this happens. Because when we we hold up the gospel, when we consider how Jesus Christ has saved us, it puts all of our tests into perspective. Because I fully and wholeheartedly believe that the gospel is enough. That Jesus is enough. The psalmist calls the tested to worship together. A few years ago, I had a conversation with a friend. This friend had grown up in the church. This friend had Christian parents that loved him so much. But this friend had gone through some really difficult realities. Some things had happened in his life, and he was really struggling. And when I talked to my friend, he said, Rich, i got to tell you the truth. I I don't believe in any of this stuff anymore. And I said to my friend, I said, look, you don't have to believe anything right now. But I have a favor to ask. Don't stop going to church. When you show up to church and you can't sing of the goodness of God, let the people around you sing it for you. And when you go to church and you hear the good news of the gospel and you're you're not sure you can embrace it, let those around you embrace it and tell you how it's changed their life for you. A year and a half later, I got another phone call from my friend. He said, Rich, something happened today. I said, what? He said, I got baptized in my church. The psalmist calls the tested to worship together. We can't stop worshiping together whether we're in the midst of a test or whether we've seen Jesus take, it, take us through it, we've got to show up. We've got to keep worshiping because the psalmist calls us, invites us, commands us to worship together. Let's pray. Gracious God, I I know that in my own life there have been times where it feels difficult to worship. And I know that there are folks here who are struggling even now. Jesus, I thank you that they're here. And Heavenly Father, I thank you for a community that shows up that sings of your goodness, 
that declares that you are God. Heavenly Father, I'm so grateful that we can hear that truth in community. That others can sing it for us and others can sing it with us. And as we sing it, as we say it, as we worship, God, would your name be glorified. For you are God and you are good. In your name we pray. Amen. God is faithful forever, perfect in love, sovereign over us. I hope you can sing those words yourself, but if you need to remain seated and have them sung over you, there is freedom to do so. But for those who can, let's stand and sing together. There is strength within the sorrow There is beauty in our tears And you meet us in our mourning With a love that casts out fear You are working in our waiting sanctifying us when beyond our understanding you're teaching us to trust your plans are still to prosper you have not forgotten us you're with us in the fire and the flood you're faithful forever, perfect in love. You are sovereign over us. You are wisdom unimagined. Who could understand your ways? Reigning high above.
testing of corporate worship as we have worshiped God for who he is and what he has done and through that we have encouraged and proclaimed the gospel to one another we realize that as Rich acknowledged for some even just to be here this morning is difficult you are going through a test that seems crushing and challenging if that is the case I encourage you to come forward for prayer after the service right down front Lorraine and Colin Romanick will be here and I will be here as well. We would love to pray for you in the midst of your test so that you can experience hope and even the place of abundance. I encourage uh, also for those who are joining us online for whatever you are experiencing, stay tuned and Luke Kincaid, our operations pastor, will give you instructions on how you can help us meet you in your time of need right now. Well, friends, as we go throughout this week as Jesus' family on Jesus' mission, may we remember that the psalmist calls the tested, he calls us to worship together because God loves us and he listens to us and we need one another. As we prepare to go out, normally we receive a benediction, but I would like for us to not only receive but share the benediction with one another today. So I invite you to hold out your hands. And then together, the words for Psalm 66, verses 8 and 9 will be on the screen. Let us recite these words as a benediction to one another out loud together now. Bless our God, peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. See many of you tomorrow night at VBS. God bless and go in peace. Well, thank you once again for joining us in worship today. I loved getting to worship alongside you and really do feel like my worship time was enhanced because you were here with me. And so I'm very grateful for that. And if it's your first time, we hope it won't be your last. Um, and whether it is your first time or you've been here for a while and you're looking for new ways to connect, just wanted to point out a couple things. One, you can follow us on social media to learn more about us. Or two, you can email Hunter Rue, who is our Associate Pastor of Discipleship, or just fill out our digital connect card. Uh, those links are right below me. His email address is there, and he would love to connect with you, whether you fill out that card or email him directly. He will just touch base, love to know who you and your family are, and can answer any questions you might have. Just a couple quick announcements as we head forward. First off, you've heard a lot today, but this week is VBS. It starts tomorrow, and one of the projects we're doing in VBS is supporting one of our local mission partners, the Grove Christian Outreach Center. So we're excited. We love this partnership in town, and we love all that God is doing through that ministry. And so we are asking VBS families or anyone really to come bring donations to support Grove. You can bring them any day this week during VBS. There will be a uh, spot out in the for you where you just drop off your donations. And we want to really just... Just show them how much we care and are thinking about them. So if you'd like to support that, there's a link below that lists all the items, the supplies they're looking for as they head into the fall. And let's be a church that supports this local mission very well this week. So look, be on the lookout for that donation station at VBS. Even if you're not going to VBS, you can swing by and drop them off. Also for VBS, we are going to end the week with VBS Sunday next Sunday. So whether you're coming to VBS or not, you will get to hear stories and get a glimpse of all that God taught and did in the VBS week. So it's going to be a special Sunday next week um, that we are looking forward to. So don't miss that um, and be on the lookout for that next week as our, uh, our young kids help lead us in worship a little bit throughout that service. Final announcement is our starting point class. Hunter Rue does this a few times a year, and this is a great step for Anyone, whether you've been here for a short time or a long time, 
to learn more about the mission, the ministries, and if you'd like to become a member here at the chapel. So it's coming up on August 14th. So you just go online to register so that we know you're coming and can make sure we have lunch prepared for you. Um, And it is a great class to learn more about that. So we'd love to see you there. Love to get to know you more and connect on that level. Well, it has been a great morning and we have really loved continuing in this series, learning about how the Lord tests something he's done throughout history and that we all can relate to. So let's continue to take up these tools for testing as we apply them to our lives as we head into this week. Thanks for joining us in worship. We hope to see you either at VBS tomorrow or next week for VBS Sunday. Take care.